rising, so I don't know, I can't, I don't know, I can't explain it. But it's, it's not really reflective of reality and what we're really seeing in our mm -hmm. culture, but, yeah. But then again, was, was it safe to say that this 200 pound woman who was a sex object, was she more reflective of, of like what we think is, I don't know, I think that there's got to be a huge disparity between we, what we as a culture think is sexy and what we as individuals think are sexy, and I think we're constantly pushed to think sexy is, is one thing, either um, this one model or this other mod model or like super skinny and when like individually Patrick is sexy but like I mean, <laughs> we all I, we, yeah we but all, we all like have this, different just, ideas it must do I mean obviously I can't speak from a woman's perspective but things like this just must do so much for some people's self-esteem you know if they find themselves to be overweight I mean they think that they can't get a boyfriend they're not pretty they might not have a lot of friends you know so things like this being posted right at the front of Tills as, you know, this is what you have to be to be someone. And you have you know? to be fake because that's fake and everyone knows it's fake and yet it's it's still out there. Nobody's call, no one's calling and saying this is fake. Everyone's like, well, I know it's fake, but that's still our ideal. And that's tragic. I don't necessarily see that these women are terribly attractive, uh, aside from the fact that they're, uh, they display quite conventional uh, attributes of, of beauty or what the general public would assume uh, a beautiful person would look like. Um, other than that, uh, I'm not terribly uh, interested in them. So maybe we could show him the before and after photoshopping photos? Okay, so just say, like just ask him like what do you think about this? Or, yeah, okay. yeah. Alright. So this is a picture of Faith Hill and she is in her 40s. And this is how she appeared on the cover of this magazine recently. Oh my god. And so what would, how, how does she appear to you? Does she look like a 45 year old mom? Certainly not. There are so many things about her uh, that don't, don't look her age. And uh, including the arm, which is very thin and lean, <laughs> which probably wouldn't be the, uh, true, the true nature of an arm of a mother. Yeah. Want to show the well, before this image? Is the before. They photoshopped her picture. And this is the numbers show everything that was photoshopped on her. Her hair is made bigger. Her wrinkles are gone. Her eyes look less tired. Her arm is like way skinnier. Her backpack is gone. Yeah. Her hair is lighter. They made her skin lighter. So what do you think these, these media images are saying about women in our society? Well, obviously they're capable of making a 40-something year old woman look uh, similar to the uh, young women on the Cosmo covers. And so in this sense, it sort of means that age doesn't necessarily uh, define the, the way that somebody looks. It's more the technology in the hands of the uh, uh, photographer. Um, and that uh, people can be transformed dramatically just through computer editing. Uh, because the, the before and after picture are entirely different and uh, it's almost difficult to say that it's the same person. In addition to interviewing students, we also talked to Susan, who is a counselor at the University of Victoria's Counseling Services. Here is what she had to say. Body image issues and eating disorders are very complex, so it's difficult to summarize or pinpoint what the main causes are. I believe that there is no woman in North America that does not have some kind of body image issue. Why? There are a number of reasons, but I think it certainly has to do with the media perpetuating this idea of the ideal woman. Girls are learning from a very young age to be dissatisfied with their bodies. I think that mothers can have a lot to do with it, not that I want to just blame the mother. But for a young girl to see that her mother is constantly dieting, it can have a significant impact on the young girl's own feelings about herself. And I think that the other side of the problem is this overabundance of food. Food is everywhere. We celebrate with food. We eat for comfort. It's a real push-pull. How can we have both? Just count the number of ads for fad diets and dieting pills in women's magazines. These ads promote the idea that the ultimate goal of dieting, to be skinny, is a good thing. I often see this with clients, that dieting was a precursor to the eating disorder, and the same thing with excessive exercise. Why do I think this is the way it is? Many feminists have suggested that it's patriarchy's way of keeping women down and out of the way. 
If women are constantly exercising, monitoring their weight, and trying to prevent cellulite, it eats up their energy and resources that they could be used for more productive things. Whether or not that's the intention, it's, it's what's happening. It's important to encourage women to think what they could be doing for the world instead of expending so much time and energy on being ideal. Some clients even put their life on hold, won't look for a career or start dating until they feel satisfied with their body. They think that once they're thin, they can start living their lives. The prevalence of eating disorders and body image problems is not declining. How do we move beyond this? I think that the most important thing that needs to happen is a grassroots movement. Individuals need to resist the prominent discourse that accepts that it's okay for women to hate their bodies. We need to let magazines like Cosmo know that they won't be able to sell us magazines until their images include the full spectrum of body types. The business sector is always motivated by money, so even those Dove commercials, which are moving in a positive direction, are ultimately motivated to sell soap. And I'm even skeptical about how, some, how normal some of these women are. Media education is currently implemented in all Canadian schools. Programs help promote critical thinking and they encourage questioning media messages and the audiences of the messages. The key concepts of media literacy are that media are constructions, media products are carefully constructed, audiences negotiate the meaning, we all bring our own life experiences, knowledge and attitudes to the media we encounter. Media have commercial implications. Most media production is a business and must therefore make a profit. Ideological messages underpin all media. Explicitly or implicitly, the mainstream media convey ideological messages and notions of values, power, and authority. These programs are targeted at kindergarten through grade 12. Yet even though they have these programs, there is little focus on body image and the effects of negative body image such as eating disorders and body dysmorphia. Even though we do have these media literacy programs, college and university age women are still being affected by advertisements and having problems with negative body images. We need more programs that are targeted towards college and university age women that teach them to be actively and critically aware of the media images and to pass these messages on to their friends. Studies have shown that programs that focus on body image, self-esteem, and eating disorders can improve body image and disordered eating behaviors and attitudes. Interventions that promote critical thinking about media messages can protect women against poor body image and eating disorders. Media literacy promotes adaptive behavior by teaching individuals to evaluate media critically. On the other hand, one negative consequence of body image interventions has been that women become more self-conscious and more aware of their own bodies. Despite this, um, body image interventions have proven to be very successful and they increase awareness of media messages and provide greater positive ab Effect and performance and steam. In learning about media literacy, we have become very aware of the kinds of deceit used by advertisers to perpetuate ideas of perfect women and men. We have also realized the negative effects that media can have on the ways that young women and men feel about their bodies. It seems as though media literacy and education may be important components to resisting these pressures, but we have also learned that by themselves, the solution is not complete. We do need to be conscious of the fact that many of these ads are pieced together and are often photoshopped to alter physical proportions. Although many of us are aware of these things, it does not always sink in. We believe that it is necessary for both women and men to be active participants in resisting the messages sent to us through the media. This can be done by making a decision not to purchase magazines like Cosmo, engaging in conversation more often about the images in the media, because we are bombarded by so many it is easy for all of us to forget how unrealistic they are, or we can even send letters and petition to magazines like Cosmo, letting them know that a group will not buy their magazine until their images reflect the full spectrum of women's healthy bodies. This is an example of what the counselor Susan Dempsey was talking about, a grassroots movement. If you or anyone you know is feeling self-conscious about your body or have any other issues, there are a number of resources available to students on campus. UVic Counseling Services offers a number of supports, including one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions, group support, and workshops. Many students are also unaware that a number of counseling sessions per semester are covered through UVic's health care plan. A subdivision of Counseling Services is Peer Helping. The Peer Helpers have a drop-in office located in the basement of the Student Union building. 
This is a great place to go for information, referrals, and drop-in counseling provided by trained students.